coming up on today's episode of Airborne. The search for Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 resumes. Xcore Aerospace reports progress towards suborbital flights. And Boeing is within striking distance of Dreamliner production goals. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. Well, the story of the disappearance of Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 is no longer the lead news on TV. The search for the missing airliner will continue. As spring comes to the Southern Hemisphere, the Australian Transportation Safety Board says that the search for MH370, a Boeing 777 that went missing in March of this year, has resumed in a long but narrow arc along the bottom of the Southern Indian Ocean. Australia is leading the investigation at the request of the Malaysian government. It's reported that the Geo Phoenix research vessel arrived at the search area on Monday. The ship and two others will conduct detailed sonar sweeps of the ocean floor in an effort to locate the wreckage of the plane. The Geo Phoenix will be joined by two Dutch ships later in the month. According to the ATSB, quote, the search could take as much as a year, end quote. The path to commercial spaceflight is getting shorter, with the announcement by XCOR Aerospace that they're making progress with the integration of the cockpit to the fuselage on XCOR's Link spacecraft. With the fuselage, pressure cabin, and strakes delivered, XCOR is bonding these structures together and integrating sub-assemblies such as the landing gear at its hangar in Mojave. In addition, Lynx's rocket propulsion system continues to be tested on a first-generation fuselage that's used to perform cold flows and hot fires with XCOR's proprietary rocket propellant piston pump technology. XCOR President Andrew Nelson said in part, quote, Teams are working in parallel to finish Lynx. We're hiring shop staff and engineers to prepare for the final stretch leading up to test flights, end quote. After these messages, Boeing says they're getting close to Dreamliner production goals. Stay tuned. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you'd like to support Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop an email to jim at aero-news.net. Boeing is optimistic about this year's production schedule for the Dreamliner. Tom Patton reports. Boeing officials say the company is on track to meet its 2014 production goals for the Dreamliner, barring any unforeseen issues that might arise during the next three months. It's reported that while Boeing spokesman Doug Alder would not say definitively that the goal of delivering 110 airplanes this year would be met, he did say there have been 79 of the composite construction airplanes handed over to customers so far this year. Alder said the issue of production goals would be addressed during the company's third quarter earnings report to be released October 22nd. Boeing currently has more than 1,000 orders for the Dreamliner on its books. The airplanes are being built on assembly lines both in Everett, Washington, and North Charleston, South Carolina. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. We at Aero TV have some 2,000 programs webcast to cyberspace, so sometimes it's fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the pilots we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. Bahamas Habitat, Steve Merritt and John Armstrong posted and said, any willing pilot who will come down and help after this earthquake, the seaport in Port-au-Prince was destroyed, roads were destroyed, people were maimed. I thought, oh, I'm really willing and I really do like airplane adventures and off we go. So I loaded up the plane with what I knew they were going to need, orthopedic equipment and everything else I could think of. The humanitarian efforts of Dr. Richard McLaughlin are a credit to him and to the general aviation volunteers. This story will put a smile on your face and a lump in your throat. Search The Great Big Heart of GA on Aero TV's news channel. A hot air balloon that was to have flown as a memorial to honor longtime balloonist Rick Wallace 
was stolen. The balloon, its trailer, and the Chevy Suburban tow vehicle were taken from the parking lot of the Nativo Lodge in Albuquerque, New Mexico last Saturday night. This past weekend was the start of the Albuquerque balloon fiesta, and the trailer contained the balloon Rainbow Through Heaven. That, along with pilot Rick Wallace, had become a fixture at the event. Rick had flown at every balloon fiesta since 1981. Ten weeks ago, Rick passed away following a battle with cancer, and his daughter Marilyn, an experienced balloon pilot, had planned to fly the balloon each day of the event to honor her father. She had hoped to fly the balloon with checkered rainbow pattern and an American flag during Sunday's mass ascension. Instead, she and her mother flew back to Santa Monica, California to bring Marilyn's balloon back to Albuquerque to salvage what they can out of the festival. Our hearts go out to Marilyn and will keep you posted on any recovery of the stolen items. After the break, we'll see a scale model of what may lie in the future for off-airfield flying. ADS-B will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-B today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. A scale model of the highly unusual 4x4 aviation VV VTOL cargo aircraft was flown for the first time last week. The company hopes that in three years' time, they will begin producing the aircraft. It's reported that Thorsten Reihard, the person who conceived the aircraft, said it will be designed to carry more than 30 metric tons of material around the world and operate in areas with limited or no aviation infrastructure. It's also reported there are plans for a smaller version of the vehicle, including a two-person variation. According to the company's website, the VV plane's electric gas hybrid design allows it to travel three times the speed at twice the distance of conventional ground transportation. The electric turbines drawing from the onboard generator and energy storage allow for the efficient vertical takeoff and smooth transition to a horizontal flight. The company says it's now seeking investors for the project. As the Lockheed Martin F-35C, which is the carrier variant of the fighter, enters service, the Department of the Navy has decided to base these aircraft at Naval Air Station Lemoore, California. A total of 100 F-35C aircraft and seven Navy Pacific Fleet squadrons will be based at NAS Lemoore beginning in 2016. The proposed action will be completed in the 2028 timeframe. The F-35C will replace 70 aging F-18 Hornets. Basing the F-35C at NAS Lemoore will result in an increase of about 68,400 operations per year at NAS Lemoore and an increase of about 800 operations per year at NAF El Centro, California. The mainstay heavy lifter copter for the U.S. Army is the venerable Boeing Chinook, and it looks like it's going to be around for some time. Boeing has just completed the initial flight and delivery of the first new build MH-47G configured Chinook helicopter to the U.S. Army's Special Operations Aviation Command. The new build MH-47G configuration incorporates a number of production improvements to include the digital advanced flight control system, more robust improved monolithic machined frames, and improved air transportability. The entire program, valued at approximately $300 million, calls for eight aircraft deliveries through 2015. Well, that's our program for October 8th. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. And you can join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition. And remember that the next generation of Airborne will be unveiled right after New Year's. 
I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.